Today on DC News Now, after a wet and stormy Tuesday, we're headed for a windy Wednesday. Brittany Ward is in the Weather Center. Businesses prepared for the flood waters that came through Old Town Alexandria overnight. A look at the debris left behind and the cleanup effort, where it stands. Plus, do you need help with your insurance claims? We're stretching your dollar and helping you get what you're owed. Then, securing your emotions. Lean into what's important to you without being concerned about what somebody else thinks about that. How to start the new year in the right state of mind. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. Tuesday's storm hit the DMV with a mixture of flooding down power lines and fallen trees, creating problems all across the area. Our crews are at Haynes Point in East Potomac Park, where you can see the water spilling over the roadway. And Falls Church saw a number of downed trees, including this one that fell on a car. No one, we are told, was in the car at the time. All right, weather forecaster Brittany Ward joins us with the latest check in the forecast. And Brittany, we're not out of the woods yet. More storms expected by the end of the week. Yeah, and you know what the good news, Mark, for your Wednesday, we are drying out. Going to be seeing some lingering clouds, but it's still going to be a windy day out there. So keep that in mind if you are going to be heading out this afternoon. Let's take a look at the current wind speeds across the DMV. Notice we're seeing them up to about 16 miles per hour here in the nation's capital. Then as you go further off to the north and west up towards Hagerstown. You're seeing your wind speeds right now at about 25 miles per hour, but then further along the Allegheny front further off to the west in the higher elevations. Winds are sustained at about 36 miles per hour right now in Kaiser. So very windy day. The National Weather Service does have a high wind warning in effect for portions of the eastern panhandle of West Virginia, portions of Cumberland, as well as Allegheny County. You guys are in the that wind warning. Now this is set to expire about 5 p.m. as we head into your evening. That's when we'll slowly start to see a decrease in our wind speeds and then the lighter tan color across portions of the DMV. And this is a wind advisory. This is also set to expire later on this evening. Overall, we are holding on to a few clouds across portions of the DMV. Satellite and radar showing you they are slowly starting to filter their way in. We could see some breaks of uh, sunshine as we head through the second half of your afternoon, but kind of zooming radar out to show you the wider picture. Still seeing some cloud deck there in Ohio that will be moving through as we head into your evening tonight, but at least it will be staying dry. Now those dry conditions, they won't last for too long as we end out your work. We we are tracking more rain, so keep it here, Mark. We'll talk more about that forecast in just a bit. All right, Brittany, thank you. And across the DMV, intense flooding from powerful rain yesterday. Many places in our area no stranger to water building up, and we caught up with someone who was out weathering the storm. Despite the flooding, he was amazed by the storm's power. You can't capture the, the power and beauty of nature. I mean, this is the bay coming in and, and, and visiting us, you know, in a place that's been inhabited for several hundred years. Town, Old Town Alexandria is one place that is notorious for flooding. DC News Now's Lex Juarez with the latest on cleanup efforts. Well, the cleanup effort underway in Old Town after floodwaters rose several blocks, bringing with them debris and closing several streets. Now, business owners left with sandbags at their doors. They're coming back to see if that water made it inside. This one got a lot of debris and stuff uh, around our restaurant, and uh, we ended up taking about a foot of water inside of Mia's. Multiple feet of standing water filled the streets of Old Town Tuesday night. The water slowly receding once the rain stopped, leaving businesses with wet floors and sidewalks and streets covered in debris. This is nothing. We just got to get some of the water off the floor, but it's not that bad. Nothing's damaged or broken, so we're pretty happy. We're working inside to clean up everything, make sure it smells good, make sure it's dry and the structurally sound. The city up and at them this morning to do the same. They do a really good job with their uh, leaf blowers and rakes and they'll take care of it very soon. Luckily, the damage left behind was minimal, but it's always an unknown that gives businesses a little anxiety. I've been in Old Town forever and you kind of get used to this problem. So 
you usually go to bed hoping for the best and knowing that at worst you'll have to close for the whole day because something's damaged. Now you may notice some road closures in Old Town this afternoon. There are do not enter signs up for drivers so they can turn around if they do see those. Now the city says that they are going to be opening these roads as soon as possible. All they're waiting for is the water levels here to recede back into the river. In Old Town, I'm Lex Juarez, DC News Now. All right, Lex, thank you. And even though the storm has moved out, as Brittany said, there's a DMV first warn day for Friday as we monitor another storm. So make sure to download DC News Now's weather app to get breaking alerts and stay ahead of the next storm system. Just scan the QR code on your screen or look up DC News Now on your app store. And you can also get the latest on our website, dcnewsnow.com. All right, meanwhile, that storm damage coming in from across the region could be costly. But before you file an insurance claim, our consumer reporter and weekend anchor Ben Dennis has some tips to help you stretch your dollar. Nobody wants to feel stiffed by those large insurance companies, especially when facing emergency expenses from home related damage. That's why we're taking a top to bottom look from rooftop to basement of how you can stretch your dollar the most on your existing insurance policy, plus some repairs you can make while saving cash right now. Leaky roof, shingles scattered, basement flooded. It's time to take plenty of pictures to document damage for insurance claims. Keep your paperwork, keep your receipts, document, take pictures of everything. While that's the start, you may consider hiring someone to assess the damage for you, a public adjuster. But before you do that, you may need some immediate repairs. Water in your basement, submersible pumps will help dry you out. This bestseller at Home Depot will cost you $124. But over at Walmart, the same one is $14 cheaper. Price check those essentials you need before you buy. As for those public insurance adjusters, are they really worth hiring? Most homeowners are going to benefit from using the adjuster provided by their insurer. If they're unhappy with the settlement amount, they feel like it's not accurate, or maybe they've had a catastrophic loss where they've lost their home and there's a really high payout amount, that's when they're going to want to look more into getting a public adjuster. Bank rate analyst Shannon Martin adds, homeowners should keep receipts, especially for any new items you've bought to help maximize your payout. As for getting more money back before the next storm. So if you need to get tarp, nails, wood to board up your windows, things like that, usually you will get that money back through your home insurance payout, regardless of whether it's a federal disaster or not. And if you're asking right now, well, what's it gonna cost me up front? Well, renew your deductible, it's inside your policy and business inside adds that if you do hire a public adjuster, they may charge between 5 and 20% of your final settlement, depending on that scope of work. But we found in Maryland that amount is negotiable, according to state law. In the newsroom, Ben Dennis, back to you. All right, Ben Dennis, thank you. New this afternoon, Prince George's County Police continue their investigation after a man was found shot inside of a car. It happened last night just before 1130 on the 5300 block of Sheriff Road. That's right next to the D.C. Maryland border. The man was taken to the hospital where he later died. No other details have been released. Commander's majority owner Josh Harris is moving quickly when it comes to his job search, especially for the head of football operations. According to reports, the team has already interviewed three candidates. The biggest name of the bunch is San Francisco's assistant GM, Adam Peters. He apparently met with Harris at his home in Miami last week. Peters has been in the NFL for more than 21 years, and he turned down several interviews last season. What happening today, Governor Glenn Youngkin will deliver a State of the Commonwealth address. This on the first day of the Virginia General Assembly convenes. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala is in the newsroom with what we can expect in his speech. Well, Governor Yunkin's address comes after releasing his new budget plan, which calls for income tax cuts and an increase in the state sales tax. Now, Governor Yunkin did release his two year fiscal plan for the budget. He is proposing tax changes in Virginia, more funding for behavioral health and child care, as well as increases in pay for state employees and teachers. He is proposing cutting 12% in income 
tax rates for taxpayers across the board. He's also proposing to increase the sales tax to 5.2 percent. The reduction in income taxes is expected to cut billions from the state's general fund. Meanwhile, the sales tax increase is expected to add up to 1.3 billion by 2026. But the Virginia General Assembly will look a lot different this year as Democrats now control both the House and Senate. Based on the Democrats' initial reaction, it may be an uphill battle for the governor to push his priorities ahead. And now the governor's State of the Commonwealth address is expected to take place at 4 p.m. this afternoon. It will also be streamed on YouTube. For now, in the newsroom, Liberty Zavala, D.C. News Now. Uh, Liberty, thank you. New this afternoon on Capitol Hill, Hunter Biden made a surprise visit. It comes ahead of a House Oversight and Accountability Committee hearing on whether or not the president's son could be held in contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena last month. He will have more on this story coming up on DC News Now at 4.